Hey YouTubers, welcome back to World Zoom. Thank you for joining me today, and thanks for all the subscriptions. If you haven't yet, hit that button for me if you don't mind. Hey, today's topic is based solely on questions and comments that you keep leaving for me, and the basic question or one that I get a lot, I, I do get several, but one that I do get a lot is, where can I live inexpensively in the Philippines that's not Cebu and not Manila and not out in the far-reaching provinces. So basically the question is, where will my money go further in a city that's not huge but is not way, way out in the provinces? So I began to research that topic and find uh, cities or suburb areas uh, that were less expensive than others and I found an expat uh, travel magazine uh, that talked about inexpensive suburbs and areas in the Philippines and I really liked how they based the study that they completed uh, and they based it on a few factors and I think if you'll hear these you'll think yeah that seems to be a pretty good list to determine how expensive a place is and so their their basic uh, criteria were rents per month whether that's for a house apartment a condominium so rents per month <clears throat> the cost of clothing different clothing you would buy at the mall or sorry, sorry, store, store, also shoes, uh, sports and leisure, because so many of us like to do those uh, type of things. What are the costs associated with that? Uh, utilities, which would include uh, electrical, internet, and water. Uh, transportation, whether that be on a jeepney, a trike, a grab, a uh, taxi, whatever it might be. Uh, in those individual cities. Uh, also your local markets and the costs associated with fruits and vegetables and chicken and pork, fish available um, in the markets. And lastly, the restaurants, what it would cost to eat at a mid-range or upper mid-range uh, restaurant. So that was the background on the criteria to select areas outside of Manila and Cebu that you could uh, live in, uh, potentially in that $1,200 uh, US range and be able to get by. Now, you've heard me say all along, I, I think that area probably should be more in the $1,600 range, or if you are in the $1,200, you know, see if you can supplement that same way. Whatever skill set you possess, see if you can come up with whatever hustle you can uh, to supplement a couple hundred bucks. It really can make that much uh, of a difference in your quality of life here, that difference between uh, 1,214 or 1,215. You'd be surprised the difference once you get all your bills paid that extra money that you would earn can go into an emergency fund or can increase your lifestyle and your travel if you're able to earn that during um, the course of the month. Now, how to do that can be the topic for uh, a whole different video. And, and you've probably heard many expats say, you know, how they earn extra income. Uh, is it teaching on Cambly or Preply? Is it giving private English lessons or tutor uh, lessons either online or, or in person? Is it working doing computer skill sets on like Upwork, uh, you know, a system like that? Is it handyman or different uh, things that you do around uh, your house or your neighborhood to raise uh, additional funds. You would know that better than I would. I could certainly later give some suggestions on how to make money. Hey, the YouTube channel, you can't forget about, you know, YouTube channel and some other ways. Uh, although, you know, I'm not sure how much you're going to make. Some of the top dogs, they, they certainly do uh, pretty well. So anyway, that that's the basis for it. So what are those cities? Let's say you're in 
uh, Calgary, uh, you know, in Alberta, and, or you're outside of London and you're looking to come to the Philippines, this is how much you receive on a monthly basis. Where will you get the best bang for your buck where you still have plenty to do and you have enough money to do it? Uh, the first, uh, I don't know if it'll surprise you, but uh, Davao City. Uh, there's two cities on here in Mindanao, Davao City uh, is the first. You know, I, I suppose you could argue when you say you don't want to be, you know, necessarily in a city, you know, how would Davao City, you know, make the list, but it's so spread out. I mean, it's just a huge city and there is 1.7 million people there, but it's really spread out and so there's some ease of traffic, you know, in that city. And if you'll look online and look at, you know, whether that's going to be on Facebook Marketplace or Dot Property, whatever you want to search for to find properties just as one of the list, you're going to see that it oftentimes is less expensive than the area that we're in now or that you may be considering in other areas. Uh, there's also the safety factor. It's a darn safe uh, city, uh, you're going to have to follow some rules there. You'll have to definitely wear your helmet when you're on a motorbike. You have to follow the traffic laws. I mean, it, it's regulated and there's some rules you would have to follow. That's appealing uh, to some expatriates and I understand that instead of the freewheeling you know, cities that some of these others will be, uh, that one there's some rules involved in and, and with that you get some safety but also some loss of freedoms. So Davao City is first on the list as a place to live uh, if you are conservative in the 1200 US dollar range. And if you remember a few videos ago, I had a guy that was there that was in uh, 1350 and was doing uh, quite well for himself in that range. So you can check that one out as well. A uh, second uh, would be Elo Elo City. Now, if you're gonna live right in, you know, the main uh, area down there that's, that's brand new and has the mall and festive walk and the two or three new condominiums that are there, I doubt you're gonna get in that $1,200 range or you'd be hard pressed to do so. But Elo, Elo City is decently sized. You have the river and the esplanade. You have some really nice uh, neighborhoods that are there. Uh, I think you can pretty easily find a nice place to live in the 250 to 300 uh, US dollar range for, you know, actually a decent property, whether that be a one bedroom apartment or even like a two bedroom, two bath home, uh, those are available there. And you get all the other benefits of a pretty beautiful city, you know, with the wide streets and super clean and the bike paths and multiple malls, a forward thinking mayor. There's a lot of great things going on in that city. You could easily spend two grand and up, but uh, as we've seen from other videos, you can you can get down in that $1,200 range if you wanna live cheap and a little uh, more conservative. So number two is Elo Elo City. So uh, number three is Dos Marinas, uh, just south of, uh, I guess I would add uh, Trace Martinez in that as well, about 20 miles or so uh, south of Manila. Maybe that's not far enough uh, away from Manila for you, um, you know, to think that's a good place to live. I do have a couple friends that are down in that area south uh, on Manila Bay, uh, southwest of Manila, and they like it. They're in areas that, you know, they're, they're comfortable with, they feel safe in, and should they want to go into Manila proper, there's multiple routes for them to be able to get uh, from Trace Martinez up into uh, the city itself. If they don't wish to go, they can. They have all they need just right there. I mean, it's not a small area. That that area in and of itself has nearly four million uh, people. You know, in that in that province area south of the bay. And so it, it's definitely not a small area 
uh, but it's far enough away from Manila, you get some of the benefits of living outside of the city. One of those main benefits is that just the cost of everything is less than, you know, you try and live in Alabang or BGC or Makati for that kind of money, it's really not gonna happen. Uh, one of my favorite vloggers lives in Trace Martinez. You, you'll see him, he always wears the, the little hat and he sits outside his apartment you know, in that gazebo area, and he has some really good vi videos he's been on there, you know, for a long time, and he's just sort of a straight shooter American guy, and I think real, I enjoy watching his vi videos, they're they're pretty straightforward, and, and I like him, and, and he's got a place, I, I, I can't remember exactly what he pays, but I think it's maybe like 180 US dollars a month, something like that, don't quote me, it's close to that, but he's got apartments around him too where they're like the 150 range, 180 range. And it looks nice. I mean, he, he's perfectly happy there. Could he afford more? Oh, I think so. It sounds and looks like he certainly could, but he's happy there and that's where he's elected to be. And I think there are many of those type of opportunities uh, in that neighborhood. So you get sort of really good things. You get proximity to the city, but you're certainly in a suburb and you can get, uh, you know, stay right there if you don't feel like going and live uh, less expensively in a safe environment as well. So we'll go back to uh, Mindanao in the very northern part. So uh, Cagayan del Ori del Oro, so the CDO, again, it's on uh, Mindanao. Uh, you know, that's a nice area. You see some really inexpensive uh, properties there. And if you've ever seen, uh, I don't know that there's any YouTubers there, not any that I can recall seeing, uh, or at least that I've watched, that actually that is their base. But we have had people come and stay in Airbnbs or stay there for an extended period of time. You know, it's right by the water, so you've got the ferry service and the easy trips, you know, coming sort of directly north uh, to like uh, Cebu or, or coming this way towards Negros Oriental or, or really, um, you know, Mindanao is sometimes like the farthest spot and the hardest to get to other places, but because it's way in the north, there's multiple opportunities for you uh, to travel to the other islands. But, you know, when you look at inexpensive places, uh, you know, that would have to be towards the top of your list. You know, uh, this one didn't count, uh, cover the safety factor. It just was really like cost of living. And I don't know that as well as I do the other six on this list so you guys can comment and tell me if that's a safe place to live uh, for me at least right now from what i know i would choose davao city or general santos i don't know if i needed to live on mindanao i don't know as much about the uh, cdo but i hear good things and certainly for cost of living you know it's pretty good as well uh, so next on the list, number five is Bacalod uh, City. Um, so that's a cool place, right? I mean, you know, if you look at Negros Occidental, you know, um, I'm here in Dumaguete, so I can easily drive there. Right? Well, not easy. I mean, it's through the mountains, but you know, it's like a four hour drive. But you, again, that's a place where you have access everywhere. They have the airport. Uh, they have the ferry service that you can cross over to the island or to uh, Ilo Ilo City. It's a city large in and of itself. There's another one you never hear anything about. You know, when, when I spent those couple years in Manila, I'd never even heard of that place. It never popped up on my radar once, but it's cool. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, to do there and they're really changing the city. I think they lag a little bit behind Ilo Ilo City uh, in the progressiveness and some of the things that they're doing, but they're still doing things and it continues to grow. Uh, it's becoming more clean. Again, they have a good mayor. Uh, the governance is good. You see the malls popping up. Are there as many things to do maybe as uh, say Ilo Ilo? I don't know. I hear some of the expats say no, but they still like it. But as far as the cost of living, and if you want to go somewhere where you have a lot to do, 
um, you know, getting down to the jungles and getting to the beaches and, you know, the malls and uh, sort of a quality living with nice people. I think that one should, uh, you should consider it or that should make uh, your list. And lastly, we'll lump these three together, uh, which is uh, the, the actual, the, the one that was uh, specifically I was going to talk about is uh, Subic Bay, you know, sort of the enterprise zone. Uh, I've always been attracted to that area. I don't know if it was because of Clark and, and Subic with the Navy base and the, you know, the Army base and such a huge base in the U.S. infrastructure that's there. And maybe just because I'm an American and when you drive there, you feel you know, almost like you're in America. Everything looks, you know, American. It feels like a city. It feels like you're on a base or right outside a mil military base. So maybe I get the false illusion of just comfort by feeling comfort with the infrastructure. But my friends and people that are in the know that live there, they like that, you know, area uh, a lot. It has the proximity to Manila. Uh, it has great beaches, you know, beachfront homes. Even I mentioned before some job opportunities, which I will uh, follow up on. Uh, so you've got Clark and you've got Subic. I, I guess I can mention Angela City, probably my least favorite place, you know, in the Philippines, but, but for completely different reasons. But if you want to set up shop, you know, there and actually live there, and I, there's a couple people I know that live there and they love it. A lot of action, a lot of things going on. But just speaking of that general area north of Manila, that is Subic, that is Clark, that is Angeles. I mean, uh, people thrive there. They have good families there, good infrastructure. Uh, and of course, you know, one of the blessings is uh, significantly less than some of the other places. So uh, that's it. Those are my list of things. I know you're going to get me in the comments and say, hey, you forgot this or you forgot that. And I appreciate that. I want to know uh, for future lists some of the areas that I uh, should have put in that didn't uh, get in the list. But there's a simple list. If you're sitting there, you have set social security or pension you're thinking where can i get where there's a lot of activity sort of close to cities but still keep it on the down low and keep it cheap those are my suggestions so from world zoom really appreciate you bob my plant and i we will see you tomorrow you guys take care of yourselves bye bye